You're probably wondering what a totem is, what they cost, why you even need one, and all the different types. So I'm gonna jump right into that right now. What's going on everybody? My name is Brett and I'm here to teach you everything you need to know about music festivals and travel to get you outraging. In this video we're talking about totems. We'll have chapters down below in the video, but first we're going to go over what is a totem, what the different types of totems are, with pros and cons of each one, as well as a section for a breakdown of cost for each one so you can factor that into your decision for which one you want the most. So a totem itself is really just a long sort of pole with something at the top as a, for the most part, a creative way to express yourself um, as well as a way to find your friends in a large crowd since it's tall and it's got something that, you know, is typically very visible on the, the end of it. You can also use it as something to identify yourself in, you know, kind of rewatching of live streams of, you know, sets at music festivals that you're at or if you have family members at home or friends at home watching, or even just artist videos, since every single artist is gonna be putting out a bunch of content, you wanna have your, your totem there where you can see it on their you know, social media, that's pretty cool sometimes as well. Now let's jump into each different type of totem. I've got one right here, but the typical you know different groupings of totems are inflatables and floaties, flags, basically a poster on a pole with LEDs wrapped around it, custom tricked out totems, and something like a LED screen or a holographic fan totem. As I mentioned before, I'll talk about the cost differences in a later section, but right now we're gonna kinda just go over the pros and cons as far as the features go of each of one of these. The first section we're gonna go over is inflatables and floaties. Now these are really great because they are super easy to see in the day. They're also compact and lightweight, easy to carry around and they're also a hassle-free build for the most part. Now jumping quickly into the cons, kind of uh, along the lines of the hassle-free, you do have to blow it up yourself, so not entirely, almost entirely hassle-free. You also are typically gonna have to be carrying this around because of the fact that inflatables and floaties aren't super tall, you know, as tall as a, as a human, so you're gonna have to be holding it up most of the day, whereas, you know, some others, they'll have a pole that you can stand and it'll stand much taller than you are, making those more appealing for you know not having to carry around all day long. Lastly, inflatables are very tough to see at night. Most festivals are at nighttime anyway, so or at least a significant portion of the festivals are at night, so that's a drawback to these inflatables. The last con for inflatables I'll save for when we go over the cost later on, but they can get expensive. Next up is flags. The pros here are very similar to inflatables where they're easy to see in the day, hassle-free, very compact and lightweight. The main pro here is that flags are very customizable. You can get your own fully custom flag. You can upload your own artwork to certain sites, just like this on Amazon. And the typical flagpole that I see most people with, you know, kind of the industry standard, they might say, is very, very tall, significantly taller than an inflatable. So you can, even when you're standing in the crowd, set the base of that uh, right in front of you. So all you have to do is kind of like hold it to the side rather than literally holding all of the weight of it. The cons for flags are also fairly similar to inflatables. They're hard to see at night. And on Amazon, you know, this one that I got for about $44, this one doesn't seem to be the best quality. And this is one that I've seen many, many people use. It's kind of the standard, but uh, the hinges after about two days were kind of loosening up and not working super well. And it was getting really annoying because it was just kind of falling and not being extended the full amount. Out. So after two days, I would have had to get another one. Next up, a poster on a pole with or without LEDs. The pros here is that, of course, it's great during the day. You can put a nice meme on there or any sort of graphic that you want. Can be good at night as well if you're gonna add those LED strings. And I think the main thing here is that they're really fun and creative. For cons, most often these typically are made out of PVC pipes, which can be fairly heavy. They're also typically fairly wide and when you're standing in a crowd that could be blocking a lot of people's view and I've seen kind of horror stories I guess of people like screaming at the person in front and yelling at them to you know get out of the way which can be stressful if you're the person holding that. And lastly it takes a whole lot of time and effort to be making these. This is not a hassle free build if you're you know, basically you have to build the whole thing yourself and then because of the you know materials that are available the supplies 
and the parts, PVC pipes and just paper and things like that, they kind of tend to deteriorate a lot faster and have to be replaced more often. Especially if you're going to be putting a whole new meme or a whole new graphic on it for each different festival, those kind of you know posters printed out at an office supply store can be expensive. Next up is customized or really tricked out totems. These typically are handmade and pros here, obviously they're very cool and super customizable so it's a great way to express yourself. But the cons here are that, you know, typically it's got some sort of like laser cut design that's extremely heavy and also based on the parts, you know, they're gonna be higher quality and then that's gonna make them significantly more expensive. We'll go into price later, but I've seen crazy, crazy prices for these uh, just because they're such high quality and then of course con being that you know you only get one design for the most part with these so you don't have any interchangeability between festivals next up we've got neon and LED signs just like this one right here it's a little bright hard to kind of get the lighting correct for um, this to show up great but that's a pro very bright you can see it at night depending on which one you get. You can also see it during the day because you know this one has a white backing to it. So of course the pros are you can see it at day and night, which is kind of one of the main points, being able to see it from afar, see uh, your friends can find you. This one from Hello Totem has their patented USB cable inside the actual pole. I'm not using it right now because it's plugged into the wall, but that's really nice because then you won't see this string hanging right there. Other than that, it's very compact, lightweight. They're hassle-free, of course, you just kind of plug and play, put your battery in and then you're set. This one of course is the King Boo which you know is semi customizable. You can express yourself a little bit but it's only one design of course so you can't interchange between festivals or even throughout the day. So that brings me to the con section. Now of course as I mentioned it doesn't have interchangeability of designs but the other con is that being that it's a very bright LED sign it's going to consume energy more than your typical you know AA battery string lights will so you're gonna have to either have your own external power bank. They also at Hello Toto have these cylindrical power banks that are fit just for the pole so it's nice and easy to just pop one of those on and then you don't have to have this extra bank. They will be having an extender if you want to have a huge power bank essentially it's gonna wrap around the pole and be a lot easier so check that out for when that drops the last one here is the holographic fan these are so cool I've got so many compliments on mine at EDC and I actually really enjoy taking it a little bit of a disclaimer here for the holographic fan totem by hello totem the footage for it is not gonna look accurate to what it looks like in real life in the camera footage it really struggles to have the same frame rate basically so it shows little cutouts maybe it doesn't even show it at all some of it looks better than others depending on the camera's frame rate like I said so there are videos on their Instagram that uh, really do it justice it just depends I tried to get some so keep an eye out for those I promise it looks fantastic okay back to nighttime these are great in the day because they're so bright they're great at night because they're so bright they can work both times you don't have to worry about it not being great in the day now it's not quite as bright right in the day as this because this has the white background but that's something to consider if you're gonna be in the night most of the festivals I've been to are it's also compact very light and portable and has a tripod base so you can just set it on the ground and stand it next to you so you don't have to carry it all day I did that at EDC and it was so convenient they have four foot and six foot options for the pole sizes, and that's just the pole itself. So once you add the battery pack and the tripod base and the holographic fan on top of it, you know, it'll add about a foot, a foot and a half. They also have a backpack add-on coming soon, so you can put your pole and your battery pack in your backpack and then strap the holographic fan on the outside, and so you can carry that no hands, it's very convenient. You just kind of click it on there. I could even do it with one hand. And of course it has this cover on the outside so it can either you know, really house the whole thing and kind of protect it, or you can have this kind of clear opening and let the design go through if you want to turn it on. 
All you need to do is take your battery pack, plug it in, and then put it through the hole in the back that they you know, made specifically for powering it while it's on your back. These are so great because they're the best as far as customizability. You can upload your own graphics, videos, GIFs, pictures, or even go to the Hello Totem website and they've got a huge library of premium videos that you can get as well. And they're all very themed towards raving, which is pretty funny. Now this, of course, is hassle-free, which is fantastic other than if you're gonna create your own graphics, but like I said, you can just get some from the Hello Totem website. They're also incredibly high quality, especially with the USB going through the pole, I love that. Also, the housing is uh, dust-proof, it's splash-proof, so you know you don't have to worry about when it's kind of like sprinkling rain outside. I don't think you'd probably want it if it's pouring rain. Their customer service is also fantastic. Heard horror stories of companies. There's another company that makes a similar thing that's much lower quality, not waterproof, lets dust get in, doesn't have a USB cable in the pole, and then I heard their customer service is absolutely terrible. So now over to the cons, nothing is perfect. With this, of course, it is a bright display, so it is gonna be consuming a lot of energy. You're gonna need either multiple of the Hello Totem cylindrical battery packs, or extremely large battery pack of your own, which you know could be potentially heavy on your either backpack or wherever you're carrying it. I carried this at EDC and didn't notice it being much heavier than my flagpole. Probably a little bit, but not by a whole lot. There's also a minor, minor barrier to entry from the kind of tech side. If you wanna upload your own graphics, you gotta download an app. And then of course, if you wanna customize your own graphics, that can be a whole different thing. But they do have a easy get started guide on their website and I followed that and it was no problem. Now let's get to the cost breakdown. You guys wanna know how much everything costs and because this is obviously a huge factor in purchasing one of these totems or creating one of these totems. Inflatables, of course, can be anywhere from $15 to $50. This seems kind of like a no-brainer for a cheap totem, but my friend uses an inflatable at every single festival, so I will let him tell you about the true cost right here. You obviously carry your inflatable joint at like every festival, right? Yes. <laughs> you typically have, I think, it's it's what, four, four feet long, something like that? It's, it's taller than me, so it's like six foot. Okay, six foot. I'm curious how much that costs and how many of them you've had to get over the years so far. $15, I buy a new one every event. Because it gets dirty, I don't want a dirty totem. People, people might say it's wasteful, but <laughs> I just think like, think about it. It's an inflatable, you have to blow it up every time. You have to bring you it in empty? It yes. So in conclusion, inflatables start out much cheaper than any other option, but over time, if you're gonna be using them at every single festival, let's say you go to 10 festivals, that's at least $150 total for all of those festivals, which could be more if you're buying $50 inflatables each time. Next up, flags. My flag at EDC was great, I loved it. It cost me about $20 for a customized flag, and I think you can get one for maybe as low as $11 on Amazon, depending on you know which um, seller you find. And then of course you're gonna need a flagpole. The one I used was a 14 foot, and it was $44. Of course, the limit at EDC is 10 foot, but they're a little bit more lenient on the flags just because I think they're you know so lightweight and also getting flags up higher and out of people's view is uh, really important because you know a low hanging flag blocks a lot of people. Anyways, the one thing I wanted to mention here, after about two days at EDC, the kind of connector sections were loose, so I would pull them tight to keep it you know tall and then it would just kind of fall. And that was really, really annoying, especially after two days. I've heard that you know it's just tough to get these kinds of connections to stay when all you're kind of doing is pulling it. So anyways, I probably would have wanted to replace that immediately. Maybe it, you know, could last longer depending on, you know, how you use it. Let's say you replace it every other festival, $44 times five, that's about $200 just for using a flagpole. And then if you want to have different flags, different custom flags for each festival, then you're getting upwards of $200 or more per festival or total. Now because the limit is 10 feet, they do have a eight foot option, which is about $24 and you know replacing that after five times would be about 120 and then of course you could also get a PVC pipe these are much more heavy they don't collapse so they're kind of annoying the 10 foot PVC pipe that I got from a hardware store was about $10 I 
can't imagine to throw away a PVC pipe. That would just be very heavy and cumbersome and like I said, doesn't collapse. Next up is a custom poster totem with LED strings. These actually end up being a lot more expensive than people think. Quick little disclaimer here while I'm editing this, you can build one of these super bare bones, really cheap, basic PVC pipe, cardboard, printouts at home, string LEDs with like AA powered batteries for maybe like 40 bucks. This is not exactly what I'm talking about. These are kind of the more creative ones that are going a little bit more all out. They get like a printout at somewhere like Staples or something like that. You know, have a giant meme, a little bit nicer string lights powered by like a battery bank instead of double A's, things like that. So let's just jump back into that. It could be around 150 to even $200 or more, depending on the materials and supplies you use. This is, you know, things like a PPC pipe, the poster board, cardboard, tape, glue, scissors, any tools to cut or connectors for longer PVC pipes, things like that. I'll add a cost breakdown in the description that, you know, basically goes over all of the things that you might need for each of these with receipts. Next up is the customized or tricked out totems. These are pretty tough to price out just because they're so different from each other. I have seen that, you know, essentially if you're gonna do it yourself or contract it out, which would be more, they could go anywhere from about $500 to $1,000. The laser cutting is probably one of the more expensive pieces of that, especially if you're getting high quality, you know, acrylic or clear housings on the outside and this also factors in things like higher quality extension poles and power banks and more again you can check the description for a cost breakdown for those next up is a neon sign as I mentioned before this is a neon sign this is one from hello totem with their uh, patented hello pole I believe it's called but you can make one yourself using basically parts from Amazon you can get a neon topper for anywhere from you know 30 to 70 dollars and you can get a PVC pipe to put that onto maybe all told with you know a power bank and things like that it would be about a hundred to hundred fifty dollars but you know of course if you're making it yourself it's not going to be the, the higher quality that you know something that is actually manufactured will be ones from hello totem could be anywhere from about 170 to 200 or more but that is of course because they have these very long extending poles that have a USB wire inside side of them. They've got their power banks that are cylindrical that attach to the pole so you don't have to have this bulky thing outside of it. And then of course their custom designs like this one which are very cool. And last but not least you can get a holographic fan totem. Now this is Hello Totem's kind of flagship totem. This is my absolute favorite just because it's so cool looking especially when you're there in person. It uses the same pole that the neon signs do and the same batteries but the top has this you know spinning holographic fan. All together they you know with the package of the fan itself, the pole, the battery bank, and tripod, it's about $300, and then it could go up to $400 if you add a bunch of extra batteries onto it as well. So in comparison, over time, with you know pretty much all of these options, they're about $150 to $200. Hello Totem's about $300 to $400, and then the customized tricked out ones are anywhere from $500 to $1,000. So the small jump from about $200 to $300 for the holographic totem doesn't seem like too big of a jump for me, especially with how cool it is. Also, I will say I had my Hello Totem in the crowd for about 45 minutes at EDC and I had already gotten like 10, 12 people coming up to me being like, holy crap, dude, that is the sickest totem I've ever seen. And it was just so nice to feel the love with people around me and actually connect with people. Another great reason to you know get something like that, especially just because music festivals, when it comes down to it, yeah, you're gonna be going to see that, that DJ you wanna see, but it's also really about connecting with the people in the community and spreading that peace, love, unity, and respect that we all talk about. So anyways, I digress. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to go down and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and also subscribe for more music festival-related content just like this. I'll catch you outraging. Peace.